This is a slide deck that I used long, long ago. Okay, so today what I'm going to say is um, how to pair type faces. Remember this? Yeah. So, one of the first things that we have to do when we start on a new project is to find type faces. And I know most of us front end developers, we don't really care because we've got designers dealing with type faces for us. But if we do our own projects, we, we still have to make sure we get the right type faces in order for the design to look nice. Well, that's one of the but that's one of the battles to be fought. So, this is what I'm going to talk about. Um, I'm Zell, and this is me. So, the overview for today is just, we're going to look at typeface classifications, and from the typeface classifications, we'll know how to pick typefaces that will, that will pair well with each other, so we can just use them. I'll first go into the major typeface categories so we have a general rough idea of the different kinds of typefaces out there. Then I'll go into typeface subcategories which is where it really gets confusing. And then I'll end off with a 3x3 three three grid that you can use to pair typefaces which is the, the simplest way of doing things. It's the famous 9x9 nine nine grid. Yeah, it's a famous 9x9 nine nine grid that I... well. So the, there are 6 major typeface categories. Sans serif, serif, slap serifs, monospace, script, or they can call it cursive, and display. So these are the major categories that people just somehow group things into. The first three categories is quite easy to look at. It's easy to tell by just looking at the endings of the letters. So if there are no endings over there, it's like there's no serifs. So it's a sans serif. Sans meaning don't have. I'm going to do like the Singaporean version of everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in Singapore, man! <laughs> I'd love to see the entire, like, everything translated to Singapore. <laughs> I need to rehearse for that. Have you never attended any of my talks? That's all you would say, so it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I turned on the American accent. Yeah, she turned on the American accent. It wasn't fun after all. But anyway, um, if there is blocky, Things, blocky endings at the end, it's called slap series. I just think of slaps as blocks, so slap series. And then if there are endings at the end but they don't look blocky or they, then it's just called series. So those are the, the, three, uh, the three, three of the main categories out there. The next few ones are molar space. Um, don't tell me you don't know molar space, so I'm not going to say it. Script or cursive, it's just cursive writing. That looks kind of good. And... <laughs> Yeah, display is big text usually, and decoratives are, well, decorative features that you'll see. Not really important when it comes to like, picking or pairing typefaces because we usually don't play around with the rest of the things. What we're really concerned about is the first three ones, the first three types. So for the subcategories, I'm just going to dive into that first three: sans serif, serifs, and slap serifs. <coughs> if we start digging into subcategories, you'll start to see names like humanist, neo-humanist, old style, grotesque, neo-grotesque, transitional, geometric, modern, and blah 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 blah. So just by looking at a list of these names, right, it's hard to ident first identify the typeface, second it's hard to know which typeface falls into which category, and then third it's like, it's hard to know which categories pair well with each other. So what I came up with um, after digging through a few typefaces and reading a few things here and there is this thing. It's a 3 by 3 grid which I've for some reason said it's a 9 by 9 grid. So anyway, to fill up this grid right, we just have to look at three things. Oh, the number three. The letter forms, the stroke, and the third one is just a, a layman thing that I came up with, so I probably have to explain a bit more. It's ca I call it the tilt. So first of all, let's take a look at the letter forms. So letter forms meaning, like, the only question we want to ask here is do the letters look like shapes? Does it look squarish? Does it look circle? Like a circle? For example, Proxima Nova is circleish, so we call it a geometric typeface. And geometric typefaces um, only applies to sense or slap serif. 
Sense and step serif are actually pretty similar. The only difference is that there are this blocky endings at the end. But the classifications for sense serif and step serif are, are exactly the same as you will as you can see later. Then after filling in the geometric typefaces, we look at the stroke. The stroke is how much we want to look at the stroke contrast. So from this picture over here, you can see that the thinnest part of the stroke and the thickest part of the stroke they are like. There is a difference in stroke width. And when we look at um, serifs, we can look at the stroke to tell us how to fill in, to, t to tell the difference between old style typefaces, transitional typefaces, and modern typefaces. So if we go by very low contrast, that's the old style one. And that is also called humanist typefaces. Then in the middle, it's transitional, so it's not here, not there. And then all the way to the end, it's a very high stroke contrast. Those are the modern typefaces. Then we can just fill it in. Old style, humanist, and modern. Modern being at the bottom and geometric is because if you think about um, geometric shapes, right, they are more structured, they are less personal, so more impersonal. They feel more cool and more modern kind of thing. So likewise for, for, more, for modern, so they pair well with each other. Now, after looking at the stroke and the letter forms, we take a look at the tilt. But the tilt is not really exactly part of the typography um, wording, in a sense. Sorry? No, this is not even. This is the, st the stress. Or the axis. I'm, the tilt is this one. Which I, I kind of coined. So let's, uh, let me just explain this part first. So the thinnest part of the stroke is called the axis, and from that point we look at how the the letters tilt in a way, because the more tilted, it's kind of like more human writing. The more modern it is, the letter forms are more straight and more structured. And when we write, we don't really hold a pen up straight like that, so when we write, it's kind of like tilted to one side. So I tried looking at um, the sans serif typefaces because that is where it's hard to differentiate between what is a humanist sans serif and what is a grotesque meaning like a transitional sans serif so what I did was okay I, I thought that the letter H and N and M were pretty obvious in saying like, the, the stem was it, like how the stem tilts on this part over here yeah. it's like especially this part the angles and compared to that one the more tilted or the steeper the angle it is it's more humanist so the other one is less tilted so it's um, a grotesque and there are some variations in terms so grotesque is also called grotesque with a K so there are things like that that well we don't really need to worry about so another example is active grotesque so basically if you see the word grotesque in there it's definitely a grotesque they label it for you already, and <coughs> using that same thing, I, I saw that there's not really a lot of tilt, in a way, for that typeface. And that's when you finally fill in all the things. Humanist typefaces pair well with humanist typefaces and humanist typefaces. Old style typefaces are basically called humanist typefaces. Transitional, grotesque, and then for modern, geometric. Why we can pair it like this is because, well, if we use the 3x3 three three grid, there are some com common typeface pairing advice. So the first thing is you say um, pair sans serif with slap or serif typefaces. This is when you start using the contrast between typefaces because if you have the ending and you versus you, if you don't have the ending, it's quite contrasting. If you pair two slap serifs together, it looks weird. That's when it starts to go haywire. Or if you two pair two sans serifs together, it looks too similar also. But the funny thing is at the same time we need contrast, we also need some some sort of similarity between the letter forms or the X height or something. So they still feel that they are together. And one of the things that you one of the one of the tips by people is that you can pair typefaces from the same designer because designers often have a specific preference for strokes and kind of shapes and things like that. So the letters 
that they design will somehow have the same thing. So this is one of the tips um, by most typographers to pair typefaces. And the, for the last one, we say to pair typefaces from the same era or the same age. And basically, if you take a look at the same era or the same age, it's, basically, it's this grid. For old style, you pair with old style typefaces. For modern ones, you, type, you pair with modern ones. <coughs> and that's the end. Hmm? You can send the list of examples. Now we want to see.